Hi, welcome to the Deep End. My name doesn't matter. Let's dive in. So today we want to talk about George Lyle. George Lyle was the first uh, Baptist missionary in America. <laughs> he was the first African American pastor. He was an American born, um, an American born slave in Virginia who uh, was born a slave, raised a slave. And then uh, his master took him to church with him, saw that he was educated uh, and was a was educated well. Now the the pastor of the Baptist church that the master took George Lyle to secretly began to meet with George Lyle and disciple him because he saw that George Lyle had an interest in Jesus. So he began to secretly meet with him, teaching him to read. Uh, well and to understand the Bible and disciple him one-on-one until George Lyle uh, went to his master and said, I feel called to preach and teach the gospel and I'd like to start doing that to the slaves. And so he begins to preach and teach to the slaves and really anybody who would hear, anybody who would listen, he makes a deal with his master that he will not uh, encourage revolt and instead he would just talk about the freedom of the gospel and eternal life and Jesus Christ who saves. And so he begins to preach and teach to the slaves and the master uh, begins to recognize the uh, potential in George Lyle and uh, gives him his freedom at the behest of the Baptist pastor in the area. Now, if you read the story carefully, it seems like the Baptist pastor was kind of advocating for freedom of slaves and freedom from slavery and telling masters, you know, you really ought to not have slaves. You ought to pay your workers and, and, uh, and take care of them and, and, and pay them and give them wages and not enslave them. Uh, so the Baptist pastor seems to have been kind of pushing in that direction and he encouraged the master of George Lyle to set him free. George Lyle gets set free and moves to Savannah, Georgia, where he starts a church. Uh, And when he started the church, he brokered a deal with his owner and other masters in the area that he would not encourage rebellion if the masters would let him onto the plantations to preach the gospel and let their people, let their slaves come to church. And so uh, the Baptist, uh, the Baptist pastor there encouraged freedom. And uh, but uh, American laws prevented evangelism among slaves. Uh, which was tragic and wrong, uh, but they prevented the evangelism of slaves because uh, Americans, um, the American colonials, I guess, didn't want the slaves to know Jesus. I don't, um, I don't understand slavery. The, but Lyle and his congregation, as a result, suffer a great deal of persecution. His congregation was mixed between slaves and freedmen, and the majority of them were freedmen who lived in Georgia. Uh, and Lyle was their pastor. His former master died. Uh, at one point when he dies, Lyle flees to Jamaica. And this is the first missionary from America. He's the first one to leave the continent, the, the, northern, uh, the North American uh, continent proper, and go somewhere else into, from one country to another. So he's the first American-born foreign missionary to leave. He's the first Baptist missionary in 2012. Uh, we used to we used to refer to William Carey as the father of modern missions, and we still do. He's still the father of modern missions, but we would also say things like he and Andrew Fuller were the first uh, American missionaries. And the reality was, this guy George Lyle was about thirty, I think, thirty or forty years before either one of them. And he goes to Jamaica, and he immediately uh, begins to preach. So he goes to Jamaica, and he starts preaching, and he starts churches all over. Jamaica, and one of the ways that he did this, one of the ways he facilitated doing this, was he, when he got to Jamaica, immediately got a government job transporting goods from farm to farm. So he was basically a government UPS driver, uh, and he would transport goods, and he'd meet. In this way, he met all the slave owners, all the plantation owners, all the uh, you know the the ruling class elite, he met all of them and he ingratiated themselves to him. And he thought this to be a wise idea because in knowing them and in networking with them, they would understand that he was not a slave but was a freed man and that way he could avoid being put back into slavery. So he's there uh, and he starts churches all over 
uh, Jamaica. But as he's doing these churches, the people begin to push against them. The owners begin to push against them. They don't like that he's espousing freedom in Christ and freedom uh, for uh, for slaves. And he's he's teaching that Jesus Christ sets you free and that uh, he came to die for all people. And the, this was very difficult for the masters to handle and uh, the the men who were enslaving people to handle. So they he faced persecution in Jamaica as well. And when he uh, faces this persecution, um, he is imprisoned, uh, I think, three times uh, for a total of about three years in prison. Uh, he gets thrown into prison. But while he's in Jamaica, more than 8,000 people come to Christ. More than 8,000 thousand people come to Christ as a result of George Lyle's work in this place. He starts churches everywhere. Not only did he start churches everywhere, but he begins to raise up pastors and send them out. So this man had a methodology of starting a church, raising up a leader, leaving there, starting another one, raising up a leader, leaving there, starting up another one, raising up a leader, leaving there, and he would raise up leaders and send them out. He just, this man was just an incredible missionary and a, and a powerful one at that. One of the, the two things that were just incredibly brilliant to see in George Lyle's life that I think that we can learn from is one, uh, the gospel brings freedom. The gospel brings freedom because we are free beyond the circumstances of this life. And George Lyle taught that uh, you no obstacle could overcome the gospel. And if you had the gospel, there was no slavery that could bind your soul. You were free. And in your freedom, you could await your heavenly glory or you could press against the wickedness of this world, but you were free. And one day, George Lyle harped on this all the time, one day God would set all things right. And praise the Lord, He will. He's coming back one day, and He's going to set everything right. There will be no more wickedness. Racism will be gone. Pandemics will be out. Nothing. There will be no more sorrow, no more sadness, only joy in the presence of the Father who sets all all things right who again he says i behold i am making all things know for, for all things new for it has begun um, revelation 21 revelation 21 behold i am making all things new for it has begun um, so he uh, so that's one thing we can we can learn about george lyle about that we can learn from george lyle is that the gospel overcomes everything and freedom is found in the soul and nothing can enslave you if you are free in Jesus Christ. And then second, uh, George Lyle did not join in the revolts. He believed that the gospel would penetrate, um, that the gospel would penetrate the hearts of even the most wicked of men. And he preached that gospel over and over and over and trusted his fate to the Lord. He was the type of man, they threw him in prison and he founded a church in prison. This guy was incredible. So he gets thrown into prison and he begins to preach to the inmates and the guards and they start a church in the prison where he's thrown into. This man did not join in revolts and revolutions. He taught the revolution of the soul that overcomes all circumstances and that has victory in all circumstances, whether in hunger or in plenty, whether in want or in poverty, whether in prison or free. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have learned the secret of contentment. This is beautiful. George Lyle is an incredible man of God for you to read about. First African-American pastor in America. First Baptist missionary to leave America. First, uh, first slave to start a church. Uh, this guy was incredible. I encourage you to go read uh, some of his biography works and some of the articles about him. Thank you for joining me in the deep end. Now take time to breathe today. Go get to work.